Everybody got a cross to bear. But don't bear it looking at the cross. That's the what. Bear it looking at the why. To glorify God. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Calvary. Welcome to today's broadcast. Here we are just a few days before Christmas and grateful to God to still be good. Amen. Scripture, I want to come from that same thought of how much Jesus loves us. So we're coming from John chapter 3, verse number 16. The word of the Lord reads as follows. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise be to God. This, this season, this holiday is all about God's love for us. He loves us so much he didn't even deny or withhold rather his only begotten son but for the sake of our salvation and our life and life more abundantly, he sacrificed his own in order to gain so many more children. And for that, we're forever grateful. I remember Billy Graham was asked a question many years ago in an interview. They said, what's the greatest revelation you've ever received from God over the course of your ministry? He says, oh, that's easy. Yes, Jesus loves me. They said, oh, yeah, that's a great one. Oh, I love that song. He said, no, not that part. The this I know. <laughs> There's nothing greater than to know how much God loves you because that alone gives you the confidence that everything will be all right. Let's pray. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your love, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for loving us when we didn't love ourselves. Thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. And thank you, Lord God, for not even withholding your only begotten son, but for the sake of our justification and sanctification, you sacrificed him on a cross, Lord God, on a hill called Calvary. And for that, we're forever grateful. Father God, I thank you right now for blessing your people all over the land. Despite what it may look like in their lives right now, oh God, give them the encouragement and the reassurance to know, oh God, you've got it all under control if we would simply keep our trust in you, oh God. For Father God, you promised us, Lord God, you promised us that if we believe, oh God, and that we sought you diligently, that you would prove yourself to be a rewarder of them that diligently seek you. We thank you, God, in advance that it's already done. For you told us in this world we would have tribulation, but be of good cheer because you've already overcome the world. We thank you, Lord God, for being that overcomer and blessing and empowering us to be overcomers as well. That with you we can do all things and we have the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name, somebody that believed it gave God glory right there. Come on, give them a big hallelujah. Up and let us receive the CBC worship team at this time. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is anybody glad that despite what you've been through, God has always provided? God has always been a keeper. If you love Him, give God a praise. Lord, it was you. Can anybody say that in December right now? Through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you. 
It's been a tough year, but I know that it was you. Yeah. It was you pulling me through. They may have tried to scandalize your name, but one thing you cannot say is that it was you. Lord, it was you pulling me through. Can y'all hear me say that? Say through all. Through all. Yeah. I have gone through. Lord. Lord, it was you. Through everything that I've been through, I know to say that. Through all. I have gone through. Lord. Lord, it was you. When I look back over my life, here's the main topic. It was you, yeah. it was you, you kept on pulling me through. <laughs> when I look back over my pain, I say it was you. It was you, oh. Lord, it was you pulling me through. Pulling me through. Yeah, I love this part right here. It says, uh, when I stumble, when I stumble, when I cry. When it fell like when it fell I wanted to die. I wanted to die. When my friends turned, when my friends turned, dead and walked away. You were right here, you were right here, right here, right here to stay. It was you. It was you. Yes. Yeah. It was you. And you kept on. Is anybody glad that he didn't leave you nor forsake you? It was you. It was you. Yeah. Lord, it was you. Pulling me through. Pulling me through. Let's say that one more time. Can I tell you, it got really bad. When I stumble. When I stumble. When I cry. When I cry. When it felt like. When it fell I wanted like to die. I wanted to die. I'm not telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know. <laughs> He'll never walk out on you. Shake our number. No, never. No, never. Can I say that real sweet in unison? Say, He'll never. He'll never walk out on you. No matter how bad it gets. No, never. No. No, never. I'm only here because I know. One more time, say he'll never, he'll never walk out on you. No, never, no, never, no, never, no, never. But grace and mercy said, No, not so. He'll never walk out on you. No, never, no, never. I felt led to take my time right here, y'all. No, never. I get it that your situation is bad, but. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I get it. I understand. No Your pillow was soaking wet with tears sometimes. He'll never walk out on but you. mercy saved my life. No mercy saved my life. No Bring back down. Everybody tried to call you a shame. He'll never walk, walk out on, on you. you. No never. No never. Despite how we made it here, no.
We've got so many reasons to be thankful. 
Can I be honest, y'all? I got about 12 reasons to be thankful. It's called January. It's called February. It's called March. It's called April. It's called May. It's called June. It's called July. It's called August. It's called September. It's called October. November. December. And I'm glad. And I'm glad. Right in your home, I dare you right there just to take a minute, just to lift up your hands. Just begin to thank him. Because truth be told, today should have been your funeral. But God, but God, but God. But God. Because it was you. It was you pulling me through. I don't know why you love me so much, but it was you. Lord, it was you pulling me through. Give God a praise right there if you know that it was him. If you know that it was him, give God a praise. I tell my coach by now. And I come to tell you right now, one thing about my father, y'all, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. I dare you to speak. Matter of fact, say after me in my house, I will see a miracle. I will see, I will see a miracle. I dare you right now just to type in the comments, I'm looking for a miracle, because I want you to know one thing. God has seen every tear. Matter of fact, God has seen every silent tear and he will reward that. Matter of fact, there shall be a performance with your name on it. If you believe that, I dare you to open up your mouth up to heaven and say, Lord, I expect my miracle. Come on, put your hands together right here. Yeah. Prophesy. Say, I'm looking. I expect, I expect the impossible, I feel, I feel the intangible, and I see, I see the invisible. Uh -huh. Does anybody believe that right there? The sky is the limit to what I can have. The sky is the limit to what I can have. The sky is the limit to what I can have. Just believe it. Just believe it. God will perform it today. Just believe it. God will perform it today. Here we go. Say, I'm looking for.
to see him working on the outside. I can feel him moving on the inside. So come on and say it. It casts the curse on him. You'll open up a window for you out of breath. When the Lord steps in, he gives you everything you need. Healing power, victory is all up to you. Whatever you need him to do, just trust him and believe it in my faith. I can feel it. I can feel it. every CBC member and everyone that follows this ministry. Yes, it is a new year and I am calling you to a 21-day holistic fast and consecration. For 21 days, January 1 through January 21, we will be engaging in the Daniel fast together. Now, we're not just fasting. It's holistic because we're focusing on our spirits, our souls, and our bodies. So, therefore, in addition to the fast, we'll be joining our prayer ministry, Five Starters, Every single morning for 21 days at 6 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. for corporate prayer together. We also have a prayer focus that we're focusing on every day that we're praying for corporately as it relates to what's going on in our world today. And we're going to be bombarding the gates of heaven with prayer, amen, and tearing the kingdoms down corporately under a corporate anointing. In addition to that, we're also having certain scriptures that we're reading every day for 21 days, different passages of scriptures in the Bible as devotionals, and I will be teaching a, a short devotional on them every day for 21 days. You can join me at 8 a.m. on Facebook and on YouTube. We're going to be doing that every day, 8 a.m., 21 days consecutively. It doesn't matter if it falls on a Saturday or a Sunday. All of this is going on for 21 days. In addition to that, 
our own sister Zandra, who's the director of our health and wellness ministry, will be leading us in physical exercise and activity that we can engage in every day for 21 days. If we're going to be of any use to God, we have to take care of our, our bodies, which is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So we're going to be engaging in physical exercise activity for 21 days consistently. And in addition to that, we're also going to be teaching health classes every Monday. We're going to have workout classes going on throughout the week, and we're going to be engaging in prayer and scripture and meditation for 21 days along with the Daniel fast. So please go and refer to our Facebook page, Calvary's Facebook page at CBC Hawthorne, our Instagram page at CBC Hawthorne, and our YouTube page at CBC Hawthorne. All of the information will be posted on those platforms as it relates to the Daniel fast, the schedule, the script, the daily scriptures, the daily prayer focuses, the prayer line number. You can call in with the access code. All of the information will be there. The exercises, the, uh, when the education classes are being posted, everything is on our social media. Stay tuned and let's bombard 2021 with the kingdom of God by engaging in a corporate, holistic, 21-day fasting consecration. Let's do it and let's make sure this year be so much greater than last year. Amen? Join us. Hallelujah. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. <laughs> no harm in praising God. Amen. Well, now we're getting ready to worship him in our giving as we prepare to go before God in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Here at Calvary Baptist Church, very simply, we believe in giving God what's right, not just what's left. Amen. So we believe in giving God what rightfully belongs to him. And we will never allow Santa to steal the praise of our Savior. Because oftentimes, I remember I used to be guilty, I'll be honest. I remember the day when we came to Christmas, I was more concerned as a very young father with making Santa look good by getting my kids all of this stuff, making them think that Santa Claus showed up, than I was about giving my Savior what was his. And even though that was... 25, 30 years ago, I still repent, oh God, for that misbehavior because it ain't about no Santa. It's about the Savior, and his name is Jesus. And we've got to be careful that we don't allow society to suck us into this consumerism trap that's for its, their personal gain to where we neglect our Savior. Because if you do right by Jesus, oh, he'll make sure you have the greatest Christmas ever. Hallelujah. So we're going before God in the giving of our tithes and our offerings. We have three giving platforms here. That's Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. In addition to giving, once you go there, you can download the app and you go to the website. Once you get to Givelify in that search engine on Givelify, search Calvary Baptist Church of Hawthorne, California, and you'll see our page pop up. In addition to that, we're also on Cash App. If you're giving through Cash App, our Cash App name is dollar sign CBC Hawthorne. And finally, you can still mail in checks and money orders to Calvary Baptist Church, 4081 West El Segundo Boulevard in Hawthorne, California, 90250. Amen, amen. And we're just grateful for you being obedient to God. He says if you're willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. Because with God, it ain't about the amount. He don't even need your money. But it is about obedience and showing him that he's, he has number one priority in your life because he don't mind giving it to you if he knows he can get it through you. Once you got those gifts prepared, we're going to acknowledge God and lift him high to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we offer unto you all the tithe and the offering. You said in your word, hear men that die receiving them, but there you, Christ Jesus, receive them as a witness that you live. Father God, we thank you for multiplying our seeds sown as you promised you would. Make us a thousand times more than we are right now. Father God, bless us with greater wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be wiser stewards over all of your resources, oh God, and just use us not only to bless us, but make us a blessing so you can use us to bless others for your glory and the edification of your body forevermore. In Jesus' name, somebody said amen. 
Amen? Amen. Okay, we're still on this series. Series, second week of this series titled God's Rescue Mission. All of Christmas is about God's rescue mission. That's really what it's about. And I want to go a little deeper into this conversation on today. So with that being said, we're going to Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 26. And we're going to the book of Philippians chapter 2, looking at verse 7 and 8. Again, back in the book of Luke, as we were last week, looking at the account of Zechariah and Elizabeth. But today we're going to look at Elizabeth's cousin. In Luke chapter 1, beginning at verse 26, the word of the Lord reads as follows. It says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth the Son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived the son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Lastly, I want to read Philippians chapter 2, just verse 7 and 8. And it reads as follows. But made himself of no reputation, but took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Out of this series, God's Rescue Mission, today I want to talk from the thought, the specific subtitle, God Goes Undercover. The day God went undercover. God goes undercover. I know we've all seen some level of crime shows of cops and robbers or whatever type of title you like to put to them, uh, but the type of shows where the police are after the criminals and they're trying to infiltrate them and catch the big head honcho crime boss and to get in close and discover who it is. Oftentimes in those shows, you see a policeman, the police officers would send one of their own in undercover. Although that officer is a policeman, all of a sudden the one that goes undercover, he doesn't dress like a policeman anymore. He's not well groomed and clean shaven. He lets his hair grow out and he tries to fit into the environment that he's trying to get into to infiltrate the crime boss. He's trying to look the part of people that would run in those circles. And he tries to learn the language and speak the, the, the lingo and wear the type of clothing and dress the part and drive the type of vehicles. And they even make up a fake rap sheet for him in many cases, like he's been in jail, incarcerated, and so other criminals might trust him more if they believe he's got dirt on his hands and send him in, and he tries to go and fit in with them in order to conquer the crime boss and betray him to after earning his trust in order to arrest him. 
It's going in on a mission, a mission that, but when you're going undercover, you've got to be willing to be uncomfortable. And so oftentimes, officers that take on that level of assignment have to be very careful because they can act that particular role so strongly and for such long periods of time that if they're not careful, they're caused to have to act criminally and actually commit some criminal activities to earn the trust of those in that society. And that some of them have been in there for so long till they actually adapted and forgot who they really were and literally became criminals and not just in acting and so on and so forth. And you, I'm sure you've seen shows like that. The reason I point it out is because of how dangerous it is and, 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 and you know, and many people would, it's probably something you wouldn't want your children to do. Because if they're found out, their lives could be in jeopardy. They could be killed or they could just get hurt in that lifestyle. It's, it's a very dangerous mission. And someone of great reputation, see, usually the people that takes on those kind of missions aren't the police captains or the, or the lieutenants or those that are high-ranking officers. It's usually someone that's just out usually on patrol or, or comparatively speaking, may have a lower ranking than some of your top officials and things of that nature. Now, in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve fell into sin and we were all disconnected from God as it relates to man's kind relationship with God the Father, that was broken. He was no longer our father. And God desired to have his family back and he wanted to save his people from their sin he wanted to fix what Adam had messed up through him and Eve's high treason that they committed selling out to Satan he he wanted to save his family but the problem was this that for God's rescue mission, it was mankind that did the crime. So it would have to be mankind that would have to do the time. Man messed it up, a man would have to fix it up. Uh, it, was, it, it, was, it was man broke the commandment, so man would have to pay the penalty by suffering the punishment and the consequences of his action. A man would have to endure the horrific consequences of his rebellious behavior. But there wasn't another man that God could get because the same blood that was in Adam was passed down to everyone else that was born. Now, when I'm saying man, I'm not just talking gender. I'm talking mankind. So man as in the species of the human race, it everyone was born in sin. The Bible says we were born in sin. We, we were shaping in iniquity. And in order to pay the price for sin, you couldn't be a victim of sin. Ah, that's a good way to put it. To pay the price for sin you couldn't be a victim of sin. It couldn't be somebody that's dirty to wash us clean. Huh? Because of this horrific act to satisfy justice, it would have to be someone that's pure and holy and blameless and spotless and upright and righteous and someone that doesn't deserve the consequence was the only one that was worthy of balancing out the equilibrium that sin 
had given us. All of this happened to us as a result of sin. Someone pure and holy, unjustly paying the price would be the only thing to balance the scale of the equation. There was no one that God could get because everyone was born in sin. God couldn't send an angel because it wasn't an angel that ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It was mankind that did it. So what does God do? How is God going to get them out of this one? How is God going to fix this up? How can God solve this dilemma? How can God rectify this circumstance? How can God make this right? Watch what God does. This is God says, I've got to get... Good, Google it, we'll catch this. The same way Satan whoo, deceived Eve and thereby getting Adam to eat disconnected my people from me and caused the world to be born in sin, shaping in iniquity, disconnected from me. I've got to deceive Satan <laughs> and cause, allow man to satisfy justice by paying the penalty to take his power of their rebellion away from him to defeat him again. Because see, God had already kicked the devil's butt once. He did that in heaven. <laughs> but now he needed man to kick his butt. So what does God do? God said, I can't send nobody. No other man is qualified because they all sinners. I can't send an angel because they're not man, so they can't do it. i tell you what I'm going to do. There's only one way. I've got to do it. But I can't just go as God because if I go as God, I will be breaking my own law. If I go as God only or God alone, I'll be breaking my own law because I said, let me make this earth realm and I'm going to make man and let me let man have dominion and authority and control over this earth. And the man with dominion over the earth is the one that messed it up and lost it. So now man has jurisdiction on this earth. Man being a spirit being that's housed inside of a physical body. Because your body gives you legal authority on this earth. Even when Satan got kicked out of heaven, he lost his body. And now here being on this earth without no body, he was illegal. So when he got ready to tempt Eve to eat of the tree to disobey God, he then had to borrow a snake's body to be able to legally entice her. Anything on this earth without a body is illegal. So God now, he has to follow. God's word is so powerful that even he has to obey it. So what does God do? God say, I got to go under cover. God, how you going to go under the cover? Only a man can infiltrate this planet to fix what was lost, to correct what was broken. But God, how you going to do that? I got to become a man. God, how you going to become a man? I got to use a woman. <laughs> See, this is still the fulfillment of what God told Satan when he says, I'm going to take the woman and put enmity between you and her, enmity between her seed and your seed. Your seed will bruise his, head, his heel, but he shall crush your head. Ah. He said, I'm going to take the woman. So how are you going to do that? Because I built woman in such a way that she becomes the vehicle to this planet. She's the door to get in here legally. You have to be born of woman. But you can't use a man to impregnate her because the man got sin in him. I know. So I'm going to have to impregnate her. Impregnate her with what? With me. But how can you impregnate her? With my word. Hey. 
Now let's go to John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same Word was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Let's skip down to verse number 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. My word was made flesh. When did that happen is what I just read in Luke. In Luke 1, starting in verse 26, is what I read. When Gabriel came down here to a virgin named Mary, but he didn't come empty, he came with God's word. And he began to feed her God's word. And she wasn't getting pregnant because she wasn't believing it. How this going to be? I ain't never been with no man. I'm still a virgin. I just got engaged. I ain't even married yet. He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you because she didn't believe. Because she didn't believe, she couldn't conceive. I ain't got time to get into that. That's a whole other workshop. But because she didn't believe it, she couldn't receive it. She couldn't receive it because she wouldn't conceive it. You got to believe it before you can receive it. That's another workshop. Don't have time. So here's the point. Because she didn't believe it, she's not getting pregnant. Because she don't believe. She's trying to figure out. Now watch, I told you last week how God prepares the way. Elizabeth God making Elizabeth wait till she was old to have John, another reason for that that I didn't give you last week in last week's sermon was this. Elizabeth's dilemma of having such a miraculous birth is something else that God used to encourage Mary's faith and convince her to believe so that God could impregnate her. Oh, you're not hearing what I just said. Some of the stuff you go through that takes a long time and it looks like God's not giving you a fair shake and it looks like God's not doing right by you. It ain't even about you. It's about the person coming behind you that's going to need your testimony for them to make it through what they're going through. Quit letting what you go through all about you. You told God to use you. Well, shut up and let him use you. Oh, boy, you better catch this right now. And so this is what he, he did. He Because because when, when, when she wouldn't believe, Gabriel said, well, listen, Mary, you think this is impossible, but I want you to know your older cousin Elizabeth in her old age that couldn't even get pregnant when she was young, God then also impregnated her. Woo! And she's getting ready to have a miraculous birth. As a matter of fact, she's six months pregnant right now. Boy, when she told him that, Mary said, what? Elizabeth, the God you talking to me about did that for her? He said, you know what? Well, be it unto me according to thy word. That's when Mary's faith was stirred up to believe. And she quit trying to figure it out and just let God work it out. And when she believed the word of the Lord from his messenger, Gabriel, she conceived and became pregnant with the Savior of the world. Why is that important? Some of you have been waiting on God to do stuff that you ain't caught his word. Let's just, let me say this. This is a sidebar. If God's word is so powerful, it can get a woman pregnant and the word became flesh. You don't think his word can pay your rent? <laughs> You don't think his word can heal your body? The Bible say he sent his word and healed them. Oh, good googly woo. You don't think his word can get you out of bondage? You don't think his word has the power to break your bad habits? You don't think his word can revolutionize your life? You don't think his word can protect your children? The word became flesh. God, this should prove to you, God and his word are one. You can't separate them. God say, I need to impregnate her with me. <laughs> God, how you going to impregnate her with you? I'm going to give her my word because you can't separate me from my word. If she accept my word, she accepted me. If she reject my word, she rejected me. Good Lord, have mercy. When she received the word of God, she received the manifestation of God. And 
for nine months, she carried God. God, what you doing? I'm going undercover. I said, but Lord, you know they go, they go think, they go, how you go hide? You God, like you, you, you the king of kings and the Lord of Lords. He said, No, I'm going deep undercover. How deep, Lord? You know you're gonna have a castle, you a king. No, I'm gonna be born in a manger. Hey, I ain't gonna let them have no room for me in the end. <laughs> I'm gonna be born in the stable with the animals. I'm coming so low, they'll never know it was me. Ooh. I'm coming low, so no matter how low the people are I'm coming to save, they can't think I ain't with them and that I ain't got their back because I put myself in the same shape they was in. I'm coming undercover. And God, the creator of heaven and earth, cattle of a thousand hills belong to him, giver of life, silver and gold is his. He subjected himself. To become a baby born in a manger. Don't tell me what you can't go through. Because if God wasn't too good to humble himself, who are we? Oh, my God. I ain't, I ain't got time. God, God went undercover that he came as word that was made flesh. God went to school to learn how to read and write. You know what I mean? Undercover. The devil ain't see him coming. God was a carpenter's boy. His daddy wasn't this great governor. He just had a just a get by job, a carpenter. He was the son of a carpenter. Just average Joe as it looked from the outer appearance. And we don't hear much about him. Undercover. He's so good. Googly woo. You better listen to me. He, 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 he's so deep undercover, the Bible don't even show him. <laughs> we know he was born. Wise men came and worshiped. We know about the shepherds. Then we know about his, his mother and father shipping him from place to place to hide him as a baby. Then we don't hear nothing about him. That's how deep undercover he is. The Bible don't even reveal him again until he's 12 years old. And even at 12 years old, you just see a peak of him talking to lawyers and doctors and all of these intellects. And he's having great conversation, asking these wise questions. They're being marveled by him. But then that's interrupted by his mama finding him and basically rebuking him. Boy, if you don't get your little butt back there in the line with this family, what you doing out here? And you know what God, the creator of the universe, said? He said, yes, ma'am. And God goes back undercover, and we don't even see him no more until he's 30 years old. At the age of 30, he shows up one day when John is baptizing, and he says, baptize me. John said, no, this the one I've been preaching to y'all about, the one that I came before. This was his cousin. He said, this the one I'm not even worthy to tie his shoes. This is the one that comes to redeem the world from his sins. This is the Messiah. He's the one. John said, Jesus, I need you to baptize me. I'm not worthy of baptizing you. Jesus said, no, suffer it to be so. Don't, don't tell it all. Suffer it to be so. Why? Let, let, let me paraphrase. God saying, shh, I'm undercover. <laughs> I'm undercover. He's so deep undercover. The only way he's endorsed, a bird, a dove fly out the sky and landed on him, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. And then a voice come from heaven saying, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And then after that, he's led not into the church to start preaching to everybody. He's led not into Congress, not into uh, 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 to a castle to prove his, his kingliness. No, 
He's led out into the wilderness. Why? He's still undercover. <laughs> oh, my God. God's undercover. We get mad for not being recognized. God didn't need no recognition. Who are you and I to be mad because they didn't call our name? God's hiding in the wilderness to win so much. So the devil wasn't even sure that was God. The devil say, hey, hey, he followed him in that wilderness. He was watching him. And he saw he'd been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And watch what Satan said. He said, hey, hey, you, if you really the son of God, let me see you prove it. I know you're hungry. Make them stones turn into bread. Because they know if this God, he can do it. Now, now, let me go a little deeper. Satan used to live <laughs> with God. He served under God for I don't know how many millions of years. He was one of God's right-hand angels. He was an archangel. He was over music and worship and everything. God was so deep undercover, Satan had to ask if that's you, <laughs> all this good teaching to me. God rest your soul, Brother Robert McHenry, my, the late great, my mentor. Watch this. If, the, if that's you, ooh, you think God wasn't undercover, deep cover. I mean, long before Larry Fitchburn. <laughs> and then after he Defeat, he never yielded. He just rebuked him and made him leave him. Jesus went in the church. <laughs> God went in the church, picked up the Bible and read the scripture that talked about his coming as the Messiah and sat down. And all the other preachers and pastors and teachers got mad and want to put him out. God so deep undercover. The people that were supposedly serving him don't even recognize him. I got, I got to close. The boy, I could stay in this. This is getting so good to me. God's so deep undercover that nobody even believed. The only people that believed him, most of them were sinners that he healed. people he did miraculous works for. And this went on so much so, I'm trying to close. This went on so much so that because they were jealous of God undercover, the preachers and religious leaders of that day finally got them, got the Roman authorities to arrest him and sentence him to the most cruel death sentence at that time, crucifixion. Now, why was crucifixion? Why was God letting this happen? God said, I got to go undercover. And when they killed him, or when he laid down, because he said, no man take my life. I lay down my life, and I pick it up again. When he became obedient unto death, the first place God went, somebody at home ought to say undercover. He went to hell. See, I know I'm, I'm losing somebody today, but stay with me. This is good to me. He went to hell. Why did he go to hell? Because people that had served God before Jesus came died. Because man was born in sin, shaping in iniquity, they couldn't go to heaven when they died. Because we was all still sinners because Jesus hadn't paid the price yet through his blood. So there was another portion down below the earth where hell is called Abraham's bosom. And in Abraham's bosom, because God made his covenant with Abraham, 
That's where people that died serving God, believing in the promised Messiah that would come, had to go in the waiting room until Jesus paid the price. The Bible gives an example of this. Jesus, not just an example, Jesus endorses or confirms this with a story. He tells a story about a rich man who was wealthy and mean, hateful, greedy, whatever, and there was a poor man, a beggar named Lazarus, who would come to the rich man's house just desiring something to eat, and the rich man wouldn't give him nothing. The Bible says the rich man's dogs had more compassion upon this beggar named Lazarus because they would come and lick Lazarus' sores to give him some form of relief from all the uh, his, his, his pain and agony. And the Bible says, eventually... That rich man died. Now, this wasn't just some figment of nobody's imagination. This was an actual occurrence. Jesus said a certain man. This was a real story. This had already happened. Jesus was giving a history lesson. He said that rich man died, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes. He went to hell. Watch this. But it says that beggar died also. Eventually, the beggar died. Lazarus died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, carried into Abraham's bosom. Now, let me prove to you it was down there where hell was at. The Bible says the rich man looked over the rich man burning in fire, tormented in flames, saw Abraham and said, Father Abraham, send, that, send Lazarus. That old beggar Lazarus, send him to me. Let him dip his finger in some of that cool water y'all got over there and come and drop it on my tongue because I'm being tormented in flames. Abraham responded to him and said, there's a great gulf between us that us on this side can't come to that side and y'all on that side can't come to this side. This proves they're all down there in the same space with a separation where they over here chilling and they over there burning. God always preserves his people for the fulfillment of his promise. And so when Jesus died, now he went to hell first. Stay with me. Stay with me. Because everybody else was born in sin. How did Jesus go to hell when he never sinned? He wasn't even born in sin because he was born of God. So how does he go to hell without having the necessary admission, which is sin? The Bible says, see, this is how deep undercover he was on that cross. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God through him. Jesus became sin. He bore our sins in his body. I need you to hear this. He became sin. He took on the sins of the world. When the Bible says, Jesus said, Eli, Eli, Sabathene, which means, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? When the Bible says, he says this, think about something. Jesus ain't never lied. So if Jesus said, God, why has thou forsaken me? That must have meant God for, had forsaken him. Or else Jesus would be lying. So what, what does that mean? This was the first time in his life he felt a distance or somewhat of a disconnection from God the Father. Because with all of the sins of the world on his shoulder. For the first time in all of creation, God had to turn his back. And Jesus felt it. That's why he said, wait a minute, God, what just happened? Why is thou forsaking me? I don't have time to get deep into this, but we're spirit, soul, and body. There's three manifestations of death. There's spiritual death, there's physical death, and there's eternal death. Jesus had to die all three ways to pay our price for us. Physically, because after this, he said, he later said, it is finished, and he gave up the ghost. He died physically on that cross. He paid for physical death. We don't have to fear physical death anymore. No more. You don't have to be afraid of it. That's physical death. 
He says, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? Spiritual death. He died spiritually for the first time to pay for that. Why? Because spiritual death is separation from God. There was a moment of separation. And then he died eternal death. What is eternal death? Eternal death is hell. He died and went to hell. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm preaching better than you listening right now. He died and went to hell. And he set the captives free. For he that ascended first descended into the lower parts of the earth and he had captivity captive. And he took Abraham's bosom and all of those saints that died believing, Daniel, Moses, Joseph, we can go on and on and on. He said, we can go home now, y'all. Why? I done paid the price. Hey, I done shed my blood. Hallelujah. I've taken it until the tabernacle beyond the, the outer course until the inner course, beyond the veil until the holy of holies in the tabernacle that's in heaven, the real deal. And I sprinkled my, my blood on the altar of incense. I've made the atonement. I was the high priest and I was the sacrifice at the same time. I went undercover to do it, but I did it and it's paid. Now you can enter into a prepared place that God promised you for a prepared people because I've paid your admission that you can come in because I've covered your sin in my blood. Let me close on this. Here's the conclusion. Let's just, he went undercover. He got in hell <laughs> with our sins. Hey, G Jesus went to hell with a fake ID. Hey! because he bore our sins in his body on the tree. That's what got him in. And when he got in, ha, he snatched the keys of death and hell from the devil once and for all. That's why the Bible says if the princes of this world would have known, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. He came in deep undercover. God became like you and I so we could again be like him. And that's where we've been given victory. He loved you so much, he went undercover to get you out. That means if you was a drug addict, he became drug addiction to get in there and get you out of the crack house. If you was a prostitute, he became prostitution so he could get in there and snatch you out. Ain't nowhere you ended up that God didn't love you so much that he didn't come to get you. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that, God, you wasn't too good to go undercover to come get me. God, you didn't mind getting your hands dirty because, Lord knows, I was filthy. Yeah, thank you, God, for your love that you would not even hold on to your prestigious status to the degree you wouldn't lay it down to come fish me out of a bad place. Thank you, Lord. 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 What keeps me humble is never forgetting what he brought me from. Never forgetting what he knows about me and still loves me. Never forgetting where I would have been had it not been for the Lord on my side. This is the reason for Christmas. Christmas is me celebrating the day the creator of heaven and earth came from heaven just to get me. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for humbling yourself so low that you, the creator of the universe, would come in the form of sinful flesh to bail us out of a burning hell. Thank you forever. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not out of word, but I'm out of time. If you fear... And you've never made that wonderful discovery of knowing Jesus in a personal way. I want to extend you the invitation to accept him. He loves you so much. He went undercover to get you, man. He went, he became lower than low because that's where you and I were. When we couldn't get to him, he came down to us. That's love. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. He's done more than anybody else can ever do for you. Receive him. And if that's you and you believe it, and that you believe that he rose from the dead, 
why don't you pray this prayer with me right now? Say, dear Lord, please forgive me for all of my sins. I know Jesus died for me. I believe in my heart. He rose from the dead. Thank you, Lord, for coming to get me. And thank you, Lord, for saving me. I give you my life forevermore. You are my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you prayed that prayer and you sincerely gave your life to Jesus, we want to hear from you and we want to help you on this journey. I want you to email us at calvaryhawthorn at gmail.com. Calvaryhawthorn at gmail.com. God wants to do something great in your life. He wants to bless you real good. He wants to make all things well. And also email us your prayer requests. We want to pray for you. And I want you to email me your first and last name. I want to add you to my monthly newsletter that will be starting very soon. Just once a month, I want to encourage you, update you with what's going on at Calvary and how you can be a part of God's great plan of kingdom assignment on earth. This year, you're not going to be a bench warmer. We want to get you in the game. But email me so I can keep you posted on how you can get actively involved in God's great ministerial work on earth. Amen. Amen. This Sunday, I mean, not this Sunday, forgive me. The first Sunday in January, we're having our drive-in communion at 4 o'clock p.m. I look forward to worshiping with you. That first Sunday in January, January the 3rd at 4 o'clock p.m., right in the parking lot. Just drive in. You never have to get out of your cars, and God's going to make all things well. Hallelujah. We're going to have an awesome, wonderful, amazing time. Let all things be well. Let us continue to worship together. Let us continue to stay tuned. We got our fast coming, amen, starting in January 1. Just be checking all of our social medias for all of that information. And I just believe what's coming is so much better than what's being. Stay tuned for Children's Church. Until the next time, God bless you and God keep you. We're out. Church. My name is Preston. I'm Signora. And we thank you for tuning in once again. Today we're going to continue our Christmas series by discussing the greatest gift that we've ever received. Around this time of year, we all get super excited about receiving gifts. However, there's truly just one gift that we should all be focused on. Yes, and the real reason why we celebrate Christmas is not because of the cool toys we get, but it's because we've already been given the greatest and most special gift of them all, and that is Jesus Christ. All right, kids, it's demonstration time. So we know that there are many, many, many reasons why we all love Christmas time. So now we're going to talk about some of those reasons and decide which one is the most important reason of them all. So here we have three different substances. Our first substance represents Jesus. And this is a really, really big reason why we all love to celebrate Christmas. Yes, amen. This substance represents spending time with your family during this Christmas break. And our final substance represents all the wonderful gifts and presents that we love to open up on Christmas Day. So now, let's see what happens when we actually mix all three of these substances together. Yes. So, let's start off with family time. We all love family time. Wow. 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 Okay. Here come the gifts and toys. <sighs> now let's let that settle and see what happens. So 
as we see, the substance that represents Jesus floated to the top of the mixture. And that's because Jesus is the most important reason that we celebrate Christmas. All right, kids, it's story time. Now let's take a look at the entire story of the birth of Jesus. The story of Christmas, Jesus is born. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. And she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey -o. Hi, Joseph! Ooh, got it. Mary got pregnant by the power of God. Hey, huh? Joseph didn't understand all this at first, but an angel came and told him to still take Mary as his wife. Yeah, okay. So he did as the angel said. Not long after that, the ruler of the land, Caesar Augustus, wanted to count how many people were in the land. So Caesar Augustus ordered everyone in the land to travel back to their hometowns so that they could be counted. Joseph's hometown was Bethlehem, so Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they looked for a place to stay. No, I'm sorry. Uh -oh, man. But there was no room for them. Uh, what about her? Um, okay. So they stayed in a barn, and while they were there, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Whoa. <laughs> she wrapped him snugly in the strips of cloth uh, that'll work. and laid him in a manger. Excuse me. And so the Son of God, the Savior of the world, was born in a barn in Bethlehem. Wow, so we really can see how God gave us the greatest gift of all by sending his son Jesus. Yes, amen. All right, kids, it's memory verse time. Woo! Stand up, stretch around, let's get to dancing. Our verse for today comes from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, and it reads, By grace we have been saved through faith, which is a gift from God. All right, kids, it's your turn. Come and join in. By grace, we have been saved through faith, which is a gift from God. Yay! You guys did so well. Thank you for tuning in once again. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And remember to reflect on the real reason for the season. My name is Preston. I'm Signora. And, and we, we wish, wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. See, See you, you next week. week. Everybody got a cross to bear. But don't bear it looking at the cross. That's the what. Bear it looking at the why. To glorify God.